wonder, surprise is such an emotional or mental faculty of human being that encourages people to know the unknown. Maybe that is the first tip of analytic study or scientific research. Seeing the timely seasonal changes, natural calamities, day and night, all these things actually raised many questions in human mind. In those days, especially when this kind of developed scientific equipments were not available, they used to describe it as maybe the wrath of some divine power. This logos means order, plea, opinion, principle, and this is an ancient Greek word. People used to believe that behind all these natural activities, there must be some divine power, divine principle which is actually governing or controlling the whole thing. In ancient, ancient in Greek philosophy, we have seen that people were talking about this logos. But this logos, first term used in Heraclitus writing around 6th century BC. He wrote in his book about logos that logos is a divine principle. He was the person who proposed theory of flats and he believed that there is, uh, the thing is changing all the time, nothing is static. But despite of all these changes, we can see opposite forces are working together. One is change, another is rest. All, despite of all these changes, sameness or uniqueness is always, always static and they are maintaining the order. How it is possible? Definitely, some any uh, definitely any divine power is activating, and this divine power at the same time is very much active within ourselves, and that is why if the if, uh, the system which is going on within us in mortal world, actually from birth to decay, and this human being has to go through all these changes. It is all this happening due to this divine principle. Heraclitus in his book defined this logos as undifferentiated material substrate and this is the substrate which actually uh, gave birth all the power, all other things. After Heraclitus, not much discussion in Greek philosophy we can observe. Plato and Aristotle both took the initiative to define logos in their own way. Plato defined logos quite leaving but Aristotle defined it in entirely different way. Aristotle in his book Rhetoric, he defined that logos may be something which help us, helps us to take the proper decision or right decision. In that case, he uh, elevated a very beautiful thing, that is he showed us three modes of persuasion, ethos, pathos and logos. According to Aristotle, that when we are interacting with someone and try to convince him about someone's moral character, he named it as ethos. Pathos, when we are trying to put the listener in a certain frame of mind, he defined it as pathos and logos, according to Aristotle, one of the most important persuasions. How? Because logos is when we are talking with ourselves. It is why it is so useful, you know, when we are going to interact with somebody, what we do, we actually arrange some arguments within ourselves. When we are going to say something, something, then we try to convince the people. That is our first, that is always our first aim, that we will convince the listener. And in that case, we arrange so many arguments in favor of my view. And he named it that logos. We have seen that Aristotle, in the later Aristotle developed logic. He worked more and more on biology, zoology and uh, so many practical science. So he developed logos, he believed, he, he believed that when we are interacting with people, within ourselves, a process is going on always, that we are not conscious at all, but it is very much active. He tried to systematize all these uh, rules in a different way. And that is why in Aristotle's logic, we can see so many uh, steps that we usually follow that we are not conscious at all, but he showed us in a very beautiful way. Stoic philosopher also uh, took a very, uh, lead a very important role in that case. Zeno Sadian, he showed us that 
logos cannot be defined easily he defined it quite spiritually and said that this is the power this energy which is permeated all the reality he uh, equated it with god nature and he also went on saying that there is an universal soul and within universal soul there is an universal logos many semi logos are participating in this universal logos stoic philosophers took very beautiful uh, steps but pyrrhonic philosophers discussions quite different uh, sextus empiricus he said that whatever we do we will we want or not a thing is present within us and which is very much active all the time you have to accept it and you have to believe that whether your decision uh, properly for uh, whether your decision or conclusion in any case properly following the valid process or not but a particular thing is present an energy a rule a principle is present within us which will uh, guide you or which will help you to take the decision it is not that uh, it is uh, we uh, it is coming towards uh, coming before our decision making that is not the thing but we actually born with that system you cannot uh, you cannot deny the very fact that is the main issue so the all this discussions about western greek philosophy western philosophy and also ancient greek philosophy but if you focus on eastern philosophy there the scholars also worked on this uh, on this logos but not in that manner as they have discussed in ancient uh, eastern philosophy if you see especially this chinese philosophy they in confucianism there is a beautiful discussion about tao they believe tao is word also principle but the approach is quite different they didn't believe in the perfect definition of tao though they believe it is much more practical and you have to have a holistic approach to understand tao then you need to observe a man's whole life his whole lifestyle what he lived throughout his life how he spent his life then only you can understand tao after uh, it, if you see if you focus on indian philosophy especially in hindu philosophy the discussion on logos i mean the divine principle was very old especially they discussed about rita but not much discussion on rita we can see but later in uh, upanishad new word added that is om and after upanishad samveda they have immensely discussed about om and they said that maybe uh, that om is a principle or divine principle but according to max muller view it is not the principle it is actually a tool for meditation it can be that they, they believe in cosmic law and they also believe that one law is within us maybe by meditation they want to join both the uh, both the energies and that is why they are chanting om maybe that is the modern day scholars uh, actually explanation it can be if you focus on buddhist philosophy which is at the same time in the part of indian philosophy they believe that dharma is the divine principle they believe that dharma buddha sangha these three ratnas you have to uh, you have to know these three ratnas then only you can have a meaningful life a happier life whereas jain philosophy they define uh, dharma as more virtue we have till now i have discussed about something which actually telling about which actually narrating that the logos there is a divine principle the logos but now what i am going to discuss right now is about something else which is about egyptian philosophy here we can see a very beautiful thing that a personification of this divine principle so here in egyptian philosophy math is such a word which actually they represented it of order and here in philosophy we have seen in egyptian history also we have seen that math actually is present from the day of creation with the time math is being destroyed by some uh, bad people but with the accession of king and with the accession of king it reaffirms that the math will be established and it is the king's foremost duty to establish this math on earth one thing that 
whatever we do scientific discussion or not but the thing is that we cannot deny the existence of some unknown part even now the scientists they do believe that there is a gap it between practical experimentation and theoretical research some part is unknown because some part is very effective and responsible to make this thing happen i mean to give you the desired result